So now that we've configured Active Directory on both of our domain controllers, we're going to need a client to play with in order to do things like test to make sure users can log in. As we start creating security policies and group policy objects, are they going to apply? So starting out, I'm just going to go ahead and as you can see, I have a Windows 10 machine that I've entitled MIIM ITS, meaning it's an ITS computer, L for laptop, and 0001. So consequently, I could grow my organization to have up to 9,900 ITS laptops. Now, again, ITS is just the department. So if I was dealing with a large company, this might be MFG. I'm not saying that this is the default naming convention. It's the naming convention that I like to use because now I can go search Active Directory and get to a computer pretty easily. So the first thing we need to do in adding a client computer to our Active Directory is to go into Active Directory. I'm going to come up here to Tools. I'm going to choose Active Directory Users and Computers. It's going to open up that module, and as you can see, I'm on the computers object. Okay. Now, in later videos, we're going to create a whole Active Directory structure for a small company of 140 employees. But right now, we just want to get the client installed in Active Directory. We can move it around later. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose New Computer. And then I need to give it a computer name. Well, I want to match that name of M-I-I-M-I-T-S-L-0001. So if you notice, the computer name is going to be that name and domain admins can add it and I'll say OK. So if you notice, I now have an account in Active Directory for that computer. So I've just initially installed this and as you remember in our previous video, we had to go through and in settings for these, um, for our virtual machines, we had to put them on their own custom network. That way they're not going to mess with anything that's going on in our production network. So here we go. I'll go into here. I do this before I fire up the machine. I'm using VMware Pro. Most of this will work in Hyper-V if you choose. So under network adapter, I'm going to click on the network adapter, come down here, go to LAN settings and change this to custom so that I add it to that VNet uh, network. I'll say OK. And it's now added to the VNet. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I power up this client. So once logged into the computer, I have to give it an IP address. Now, in a subsequent lab, we're going to install DHCP so that our clients can use dynamic host control protocol to get its IP address. But right now, we need to give this an IP address that matches the network address for our servers. So pretty easy. I'm really digging Windows 10 because I can come down here and type what I want. Here's the network and sharing center and it'll open that up. I can go to change adapter settings. I'm going to right click on the Ethernet connection and go into properties. At this point, I'll find the IPv4 and I'll open it up. Now, I need to give this an address here. So I'll go use the following IP address. And if you remember, we used a 172.16.0 network. Let me turn on that numlock. I need to set that in VMware. Zero, and then I'm going to give it 100. Its subnet is a 255.255.240.0. Its default gateway, I'm going to go ahead and give it a default gateway of the original domain controller, 16.0.10, uh, sorry, 1 for the gateway. And then down here for the DNS server, I'm going to point it at the Active Directory DNS that's running on my domain controller 1. So I'll say 0, and that was 10. Now, because I also installed DNS, and for redundancy, I can give it a second DNS server, which is the second domain controller. So there's some redundancy there if the first domain controller is not able to return replies for DNS. So at this point, I'll say OK. I'll close that out. And if you notice, it now says, hey, I want to connect to a network and I can connect. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I get rid of this update tools thing. 
So at this point, I now need to just rename the computer. So if I come in here and type rename, it says rename this computer. Rename your PC or join the domain. That's what I want to do. So I'll go to settings and open up that deal. And notice it gave it this funky name when I installed the OS. So I want to give it the name of M-I-I-M-I-T-S-L-0001. That is the name that will match my Active Directory account name that I've given it. So its fully qualified domain name is going to be that M-I-I-M-I-T-S-L-0001 dot the corporate uh, Active Directory structure. So I am going to restart. I'll pause while it does that. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of logging back in. And again, I'll just come over here and type rename. I'll get back into that settings because this time I want to join it to the domain. So I'll click on that. If you notice, my computer name has changed. I'm going to go in and tell it to join the domain. What domain do I want to join? I want to join corporate.miim.com. So I'll say next. It's going to ask me for the administrator password. Now remember, good practice is to change that default administrator. But in these videos, I'm just trying to keep it simple. Put in the administrative password for the domain. So this is the Active Directory domain administrator. So I'll put that in. Right now, I'm just going to accept the user information. Restart the computer here real quick. And after that final restart, you'll notice that now it is looking for, remember we just used that default administrator as the user who would be using this machine. It's now part of the corporate domain for MIIM. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could just log in and that machine is active on my Active Directory. All right, that's it for this video. Take care.